Welcome to Ryan's Running Reviews in partnership with Roadrunner Sports, and today we're taking a look at one of Hoka's thickest running shoes. It's the Stinson 7. Let's run with it. Before we get started, I do want to say these shoes were provided to me by Roadrunner Sports. However, no one had a chance to preview this video, and this file synopsis is my own. I'd also like to say please leave a like on the video and consider subscribing. Here we go. The Stinson 7 got a complete redesign this year from head to toe, and this is one of Hoka's largest options, which is quite impressive because Hoka is already known for their thick midsoles, and this kind of takes it to a whole new level. This is a rather unique option. It's a stability, all-terrain, everyday shoe, which basically means you can use it for trail running, road running, hiking, backpacking, walking, or anything else you can think of. And if you're someone who needs some guidance or support, it is a stability option with a new type of stability mechanism that Hoka is calling an H-frame this year, and we'll get into all that later on in the review. As far as the stats go, the Stinson costs $170, and for some reason Hoka updated their sample size from a men's size 9 now to a men's size 10. So all the stats for the shoe are now provided for a men's size 10 for some reason. But with that being said, we have a ridiculous stack height of 42 millimeters in the heel, 37 in the forefoot for that classic Hoka 5 millimeter heel to toe drop. And with this massive shoe and massive platform, it does weigh quite a bit, coming in at 12.9 ounces, which is definitely on the heavier end of the spectrum. Moving to the upper, we have an engineered jacquard mesh. The breathability was pretty average. It got the job done. It does fit true to size. And my only major complaint with regard to the fit was I had a little bit of rubbing towards the top of the toe box on my big toe. But other than that, the lockdown was quite secure and I was very happy with the heel counter and how stiff it was along with this kind of mini elf ear pull tab and the level of padding you have in the ankle and Achilles area. It's very plush and quite pleasant, and I didn't feel like my foot was going anywhere, which I think is quite important when you have a platform this large. Hoka added a rubberized overlay towards the top of the toe box to give some protection. It's moderately flexible, and for me, it did a decent job. It's not the most robust or thickest toe guard I've ever used, but it got the job done, and I didn't have any major complaints. The tongue is partially gusseted with a small strip of engineered mesh on the medial side to keep it in place. And I am disappointed that Hoka didn't fully gusset the tongue. Typically with trail shoes, you want that extra layer of protection so debris can't find its way into the shoe and next to your foot. So hopefully in future iterations, they give us a fully gusseted tongue and just that added layer of protection. The tongue has an average amount of padding. It did a good job of keeping the lace pressure off and it's a more low profile tongue too. It doesn't come too far up your leg, which I do quite appreciate. So let's talk about this massive 42 millimeter midsole. This is a stability running shoe and Hoka is changing their stability technology or implementation. They used to use something called a J-frame, which we see on the Arahi and the Gaviota, where you have a more dense foam on the medial side that comes partway up on the lateral side, creating a J-shape and helps you from basically rolling inwards. That has been changed this year to an H-frame. So as the name implies, the support mechanism is now shaped like an H. I'll put a picture on the screen so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Essentially, this top layer of orange foam is the H-frame and is going to be a bit more dense. So as your foot sinks lower into the midsole, it provides additional guidance and stability. I will say in my mind, I think this new implementation with the H-frame is more accommodating for a wider variety of runners compared to the J-frame. So why do I say this? Well, the old J-frame technology had more dense foam on the medial side and a softer foam on the lateral side, which basically meant it's better for those that overpronate or roll inwards compared to those that supinate or roll outwards. Now with the new H-frame, as you sink further into the midsole, you now have support on both the lateral and medial side, making it a more versatile stability shoe for those that happen to roll outwards or inwards. It kind of works for both situations. And in addition to the H-frame, you have some mini foam sidewalls towards the back of the shoe on both the lateral and medial side. The shoe itself also has an incredibly wide base with flat waisted geometry through the midfoot, giving you a ton of surface area and just even more inherent stability. And if that wasn't enough, that H-frame and everything else we talked about makes this a very stiff, a very rigid shoe. So how did the midsole actually feel with everything we talked about? Well, in my experience, this is a very dense level of cushioning. It's not overly soft and squishy. You don't have a lot of play here either side to side. There's not a ton of midsole compression, which I think is important, one, for a stability shoe, and two, for a trail shoe that's this large. I was a little bit nervous to take this on the trail just because of how massive it was. I thought I was going to twist an ankle, but I was actually incredibly impressed with how smooth and stable the overall ride was. 
The early stage of Meta Rocker technology also helped a lot with the ride of this shoe. It really felt like I was able to get up on my toes and kind of keep it moving. And that pairs very nicely with the stiff nature of the midsole itself. Again, I thought there was a plate in here when I first tried it out and I was actually surprised that there wasn't because of how stiff that forefoot was. But again, paired very nicely with the rocker and I think is kind of necessary when you have a shoe this large and dense. I will say this is not a very fast shoe coming in at 12.9 ounces. It's rather heavy. You have a ton of ground contact here and the midsole, while it provides a nice level of cushion, doesn't have a ton of energy turn and spring to it. In my mind, this is just like a solid shoe just to kind of go out and just cruise for miles, just kind of a steady state, nice, easy pace. If you just want something to kind of carry you in a very stable, just kind of consistent manner, I think that works very well here. I tried it on the road as well, and it's kind of hard just because there's so many other max cushion road running shoes I think perform better. This really is kind of geared towards me like gravel paths, hiking paths, or just more trails in general. Um, you can use it on the road, it works okay, but I think if you're going to the road, there's other better options out there. This is really kind of geared towards someone that needs that extra traction, uh, a cushion and stability over some of those more inconsistent natural paths. Moving on to the outsole, we have a ton of thick rubber coverage here with four millimeter lugs. I will say if you take a look at the lug pattern, you kind of tell it's a mix between Hoka's road running shoes and their trail shoes. Works well on the trail, it's fine for the road. I really wouldn't have taken it on anything super technical just because it doesn't have the most aggressive lug pattern, but I was quite happy with the traction and the rubber is quite thick, which I think will definitely help the durability. So when it comes down to it, the Stinson 7 surprised me in a good way with its early stage meta rocker, which works very nicely with the rather rigid midsole. This provides an extremely stable ride. The compression molded EVA foam gives you a dense level of cushioning. You have no ground feel whatsoever. I didn't feel any of the rocks under my foot. And I think this shoe works best for trail running, gravel running, or some of those more, I guess, natural surfaces compared to asphalt, concrete, and things like that, mainly because if I'm doing road running, I'm going to go with a more conventional, highly cushioned shoe. I think this is just a little bit too heavy at 12.9 ounces. But for someone who wants a really stable, really kind of reliable, just cruiser of a shoe, just take out for some easy miles on the trails or just out on a dirt path, I think that's where this will shine. I do wish it was a little bit lighter at 12.9 ounces. That's rather heavy. I hope they bring that down in future iterations, but it is surprisingly comfortable and smooth for such a large shoe. So let me know down in the comments, what do you think of this massive shoe with its brand new H-frame technology? I would love to hear from you. Well, I'm Ryan from Ryan's Running Views, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks.